Boy, do I have a juicy one for you. <laughs> this gets into a little bit of gossip for sure. But a big story broke on September 19th on Thursday involving journalists and a former presidential candidate. So if you hadn't heard about this, RFK Jr., of course, the Kennedy legacy, basically on the stage again now, was caught in a uh, sexting relationship, in other words, texting about sexual things, with this Olivia Newsy, who was a, a Washington reporter for New York Magazine. Newsy, Olivia Newsy, was engaged to Ryan Lizza, who was also uh, 20 years her, 19 years her senior. He's 50, she's 31. And he's the Washington correspondent for Politico. So you have these two, and those are known as, obviously, progressive publications. And then you have this independent candidate, a Kennedy, who uh, threw his support to Donald Trump during the campaign. What a story this is. And I thought, now wait a minute, 31. So I wanted to look at Olivia Newsy's chart because that's awfully close to her Saturn return. It's outside the window. But let's take a look at her chart because there are some very interesting things going on for her. And then we'll also take a look at RFK Jr.'s chart as well. There's a lot of astrology at play here. So here is Olivia Newsy's natal chart as best we know it. Her exact birth information is not available online, but her birthday is January 6th, 1993. And she was born, my understanding is, in New York City. So... Um, I put that as the information in the chart. And then what we do is we put the sun right here at the ascendant point. So we're reading her chart as though we're looking at it through the lens of her sun. It's a very effective technique of looking at the chart when you don't have an exact birth time. Her natal Saturn is at 16 degrees, almost 17 degrees, because there's 60 minutes in a, in a degree. So she's almost at 17 degrees in the sign of Aquarius. So she already has this independent fierceness about her Saturnian characteristics. And by the way, she is a Capricorn, so Saturn rules her chart, and that's why this is even more significant. So the Saturn return happens usually at 28 and a half to 29 years old because it takes that long for Saturn to orbit the sun. So in your late 20s, Saturn will come back to where it was in your birth chart. It happens the second time when you're about 59. And then if you are so blessed with years, it will happen again in your late 80s. And these are reckoning periods. These are squaring up periods. Saturn returns are often characterized by divorces, moves, births, or marriages, or the dissolving of a marriage, just it's a lot of reconciling and squaring up. And it's almost like if you're on your karmic path, Saturn will realign you with that path at about 28, 29. If you're not on your karmic path, like I was not when I was that age, I never knew it even happened. I was producing a television show. I was traveling all over the place. I was in a bad marriage that I just, you know, traveled to get away from. I was doing a lot of editing. So busy, busy, busy doing my little thing. And Saturn came and went. Never any a blip in the, in the process. But boy, not for Olivia Newsy. Now, right now in the sky, I'll put it up here in a minute. We can see. But Saturn would be about right here in the sky. So it's about a full degree away from her return point, which would have been uh, three years ago, let's say, widely. Now, evidently, this situation with RFK Jr. started in late 2023, and that would have pulled Saturn back up here a lot closer to that window of the Saturn return. How wide is it? Maybe about a year and a half on either side that you could say. But, I mean, it seems like this thing kind of transpired still within enough of that window that she would have been, what, 29 and a half. And that would have been, yeah, that would have been close for sure. Now, what happened is on September 19th, Thursday, this former CNN reporter, Oliver Darcy, who started his own website called Status, 
doing independent journalism, broke this story that apparently the people in the New York Magazine newsroom found out about this because they said they were not necessarily trying to keep this quiet. They were telling people about it. Well, you tell people it's going to get back. And of course, I think if the way that I'm reading the stories on this, if she had just told them back then that she was doing this, she said, look, I'm, you know, I got a little thing going on the side here with RFK Jr. I need to be pulled off of these stories. Then this would not have been the journalism scandal that it was. It still would have been the personal scandal for sure. And what's even more bizarre about this is that she is a Capricorn. Her sun is at 16 degrees Capricorn, right in the middle of the sign. Capricorns are steady and solid and firm and determined, and they don't get shaken off their course. It's the sea goat climbing the mountain with a goal. And here she was at the top of the journalism game at age 31 and basically threw it all to the wind for this not even a physical relationship. So we could look at this and say, do we see more of this in her chart? And this is where it gets very interesting. So what I'm going to do now is make things a little busier, but these are the planets in the sky as they are today as I'm recording this. So like I said, there was Saturn right there. And it's far enough past, but I do think that it's definitely significant in this situation. So we circle that and we go, wow. Now, another big influence in the sky right now that's also showing up in the news is Neptune is at the late degrees of the sign of Pisces, which it happens to rule in astrology. And Neptune's characteristics are about, well, one, lies and deception. Another, cover-ups, illusion. Uh, another common word that's thrown around is delusion, like you just can't see things clearly. And Neptune takes 164 years to go around the chart, so it's going to be a long, long time before it's back in its own sign of Pisces. This is a once in multiple generations uh, position for Neptune to be in. So it is going to hover right here because you see it's in red right now. That means it's in retrograde. It looks like it's going backwards in the sky. And as it sits at the last degrees of Pisces, knowing that it will not be back on planet Earth in that position for another 160 years, it's cleaning up a lot of business. And that's why like these pastors are being busted for these sexual crimes, not just sins, crimes that are being committed against underage people, underage women, a lot in politics. We just had the Diddy arrest, the rapper guy, the music guy. And then all of a sudden, it was like these music executives started jumping ship. They start bailing out of their positions, their CEO jobs. I mean, what does that indicate? So something more may be coming down there. And we've seen the, the truth in so many of these areas, corporations, uh, politics, and maybe in your own life where something was exposed and something came to light. That's the nature of Neptune being in the position that's it, that it's in. And then I noticed this. This is back in her natal chart. This is Mars. And in her natal chart, you notice it's red. It was going backwards on the day that she was born, January 6, 1993. It's in the sign of Cancer, a sign that Mars doesn't like. It's too watery. It's too emotional for hot and fiery and aggressive Mars. So already she has this conflict, if you will, of her emotions around this part of the chart right here is the seventh house. This is about relationships. Whoa, she was engaged to Ryan Lizza, who was also a political reporter. He was with Politico, and he is 19 years older than she. And she threw the totally threw the relationship away. They were engaged in 2022, and a couple of weeks ago before this announcement, so as this came out, as this was going to come out, she had to go to him and say, sit down, I got something I need to tell you. And she basically, in typical Mars style, blew this relationship to smithereens. I mean, she just, 
She just blew it up because he broke off the engagement immediately. So that position in her natal chart also indicates conflict in relationships just inherently in her, in her natal chart. That's a pattern that is going to follow her probably for the rest of her life. And another thing that I thought was very interesting around this is here is the planet of Uranus. It's the planet of sudden surprises. And notice it's also red, so it's moving backwards. And what that means is that these things are more personal. So this is a very personal as well as collective, but boy, are certainly four lives affected today. Olivia and Ryan and JFK Jr. and his wife are all affected in this super strongly in a wow, didn't see that coming kind of surprise. That's the stuff of Uranus. And where is it in the sky right now? It's in the sky in her fifth house. And one of the areas of fifth house is taking risks, which she certainly did. And it's also casual or relational sex. And there's Uranus of surprises going backwards, like I'm going to unscrew this cork lid backwards. And we're going to, we're going to surprise, you know, surprise. And that's exactly what happened in that particular area. And this doesn't even, like this chart is not even her true natal birth chart because I doubt she was born at 12 noon. So it's just amazing how astrology reads these various things. That happened as Saturn was literally moving back toward her Saturn return. That energy, even though she's past it, is getting stronger for her. And then, pow, Uranus comes along. And actually, this little fixed star, Algol, is a very negative star. Oh, I'll show you one other thing that's amazing. Yeah, and Uranus is very close to Algol. And that has brought a lot of misfortune in various situations. Let me show you one other thing. No, this is on the transit chart. We are not far away from these two planets coming together right here. This is the south node of the moon that looks like the horseshoe. And this is, of course, the sun. This is called, when they come together, which will be a week after, about a week, 10 days, let's say, after this thing broke, the sun and the south node will be exactly aligned. And that is called a moon wobble. <laughs> Has nothing really to do with the moon other than this is one of the nodes of the moon, which I'm not going to get into here. But it's a very karmic, fated kind of position. And it's also something that has shown up in the astrology of major world events, such as earthquakes, hurricanes, things like the 9-11 bombing was during a moon wobble, during this phase where the moon is approaching one of the nodes, either from a conjunction, which this will be, or a 90 degree square. So this is a super significant addition to the fact that not only does the moon wobble affect the collective, but it also can affect us individually. So the point is, when you have all of these signs, all right, let's just wipe the slate here and let's say that you're an astrologer and Olivia Newsy came to you and said, I kind of got this thing going that I need to be careful with. What do you see in my chart right now? And it was somewhat close to this date. Then you would have sat and looked at exactly what we picked apart. You would have said, well, Saturn is moving back toward your Saturn return. Tell me what happened during your 28, 29, 30 year old years. Well, we would hear whatever that story was. And then you would definitely point this out in the house. And you might ask her, you'd say, this thing that you're concerned about, does it involve something private, something sexual, something risky? Because those are all fifth house characteristic. I mean, you, you haven't even left the astrology cookbook to ask that kind of question. And she would have blushed instantly. And she would have looked down and she would have said, yes, it actually does. And I would have said, are you in a relationship with somebody now, not knowing the backstory? And she would have said, yes. And I would say, you better be careful. It could cost you your relationship. And then just knowing from the Fun Astrology podcast where we've been covering this, you also would say, and by the way, we're in a moon wobble. 
which can really blow the lid off of things, can be catastrophic. So I would have told her to come clean. And if she had told and revealed the story of what was going on, I said, well, there's two people you need to tell. First of all, your employer, and second, your fiance. And it may not be in that order, but you need to tell those two people. And then you need to obviously tell the other party involved that this thing is about to, to break and you need to cut it off. So that's what an astrologer would have told her. Now, what this seems to me to indicate is a conversation about fate and free will. Are those things that we just looked at, are they controlling this situation? Or did these people have a, a choice or a chance? Or was this a fated destiny that this was going to happen one way or the other? And this is a common question related to astrology. And I think that the answer is not on either extreme. We are not puppets on a string. And there are some things that move in an energetic flow that are shown in our birth chart that typically unfold throughout a lifetime one way or another. But even within that, we have choice. And to me, this is one of the great benefits of knowing and understanding astrology because we can navigate around the potentialities. Once we know what's there, we can see and make decisions and make choices and literally completely steer it in a different direction if it's a negative or we could move toward it and put things out if it's a positive. So that's one of the greatest benefits of understanding astrology is this kind of situation right here. Now this is Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s chart and it's interesting here that he is also a Capricorn. He's a 27 degree Capricorn and he has Venus next to his son. And as I got to looking at his, the news on him, let me just circle both of those together. Before he married his current wife, he had 43 of these kinds of relationships, women's numbers stored in his phone. He had them organized by location and by characteristics and what they did so that he could remember. And that just doesn't to me like Venus and, and being so close to his son is something that should be a lot more stable in his relationships than that. So there are other things that we would look at, and I can see right across the chart from that here, we can see that the moon is in the 12th house and is close to Uranus, which is there's that planet of surprises again. Here's just one other that characterizes this thing about RFK Jr. And as I'm reading more comments as they're coming in through the day, the sun, obviously up here, is in this square aspect to his Neptune. We just talked about Neptune being the planet of lies and deception. And his chart, I mean, look how strong this is. It really hits everything over here. Neptune affects his Mercury, that's his speech, his communication, his Sun, that's who he is in the world, his Venus, that's love affairs, romance, and it also hits his Chiron in the North Node, that's his karmic path. So he, all of these misrepresentations and his reputation of lies and deceptions is something that was built into his karma, but is something that he has not worked through yet, obviously, in his life. Maybe he's trying. I'm seeing the response that he put out that he tried to block her. Yeah, but it didn't work. So we've just seen an incredible display of astrology at work. And yet, at the end of the day, what really we have to focus on is making good decisions for ourselves. Because this young lady basically jeopardized her career at, she's only 31, not even at the peak of it. And here she was at the top of her game and the top of the political news cycle and, and this power couple thing threw it all away. Absolutely incredible. So when we get to feeling crazy and like we want to do something kind of nutcase and evidently RFK Jr. had done his fair share of that too, we have to come back to center put our feet on the ground and take a look at an astrology chart and see where this could go wrong. I'm like, no, don't do it. And still just make a good decision 
about being a good, honest, integrous human being.